Welcome to the First Issue Club Podcast, the weekly comic book reading show where, just like Sue Storm, we love good reads. Oh, oh. my God. How long have you been sitting on that, Jim? I said read, popped right into my head. Fantastic. I love it. Is that a t shirt? <laughs> yes. It might be. Copyright. I thought you were going to say because not a lot of people see us. <laughs> we're invisible to a <laughs> yeah, lot of people. <laughs> well, so it works on a multiple layers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm Mike D. I'm Greg. And I'm Vargas. And we're going to be running down some of our favorite comic news from the past week and then talk about the last handful of books we read. It's called The First Issue Club. There's going to be a couple first issues littered in there, too. Mm-hmm. A great jumping on and accessible point for joining the comic book family. Hashtag comic fam. <laughs> hashtag? <laughs> Wait, at, what, I, at what age do you become too old for hashtags? Well, how are, old they are, timeless? are they timeless? No, how old I'm are you a thousand. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the age you are right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you have to, if you have to ask the question, you're too old, Grandpa. Yeah. I think whenever I read hashtag fam, which a lot of people are doing hashtag comic fam lately. Oh, um, interesting. All kinds of social media. Uh-huh. Um, I did hashtag Potter and family for a second when we first started the show. Potter and family. Like modern family. But yeah, I get it. You're my Potter and family. Okay. I felt, I felt weird doing it because it didn't make a lot of sense. You you came up with that joke. No, yourself. I saw it and I was like, oh, this would be going to fun. Nah. Okay. No, no, not Podcasters not for, supporting for, co- podcasters. Yeah, but they, we need to get a better hashtag. Potter and family. I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. Pod squad. Pod racing. <laughs> we'll get it. By the end of the show, we'll have a hashtag for all you podcasters to use to form a community. You keep those silent ideas in your head until the end of the show. Then. My ideas are a lot like Sue Storm. They get fucked by Namor. <laughs> I don't follow. Like Sue Storm, uh, she had a she had an affair. Right, she stepped out on Reed. Mm-hmm. Got a little fish action. Okay. Who could blame her? Yeah, the man is hot. They had to digitally shrink his dick for the movie. Did you see that? Yeah, digitally had to shrink his bulge because it was uh, too mighty. I did not hear that. Yeah, Imperious they, Rex, they, indeed. They yeah. definitely made his made his marvel. So, okay, here's some recent comic book news that I saw driving I, to the studio. I, I, I'm supposed to move on from that? I'm, I'm helping you. I, <laughs> you're you're shell-shocked. You are saving Private Ryan. Your ears are ringing. People's body parts are blown off. I am. Well, and I'm part of just, like, in awe of what that says about our culture, too, is that for women it's, like, more curves, more everything. Right. And for men it's, like, shrink them so they're as asexual as possible. Yeah, well, I mean, like, he's in that small little swimsuit, and, I mean, the unedited picture, yeah, it, good for you, dude. Yeah, he's got it going on. Yeah. Me and more. <laughs> for sure. I, look, I don't need another reason for my girlfriend to be looking at him. You know what I mean? <laughs> she already like, has so, so many. He already looks far better than I do in a swimsuit, and I don't need <laughs> another reason for him to look better than I do in a swimsuit. And now he's just rich. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the odds just keep stacking against Vargas. All right, comic book news. Shift. <laughs> Driving to the studio, uh, it came to my attention that there is a new trend, new hashtag coming out on Twitter called Make Marvel Mail Again. No. Yes. We have a so bunch of- So people want to put comic books in, what, envelopes and ship them off to people or- <laughs> M A L E. Oh. This is a gender problem for some parts of the population, mostly angry white men. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Apparently, yeah. on Twitter, people feel like there's too many ladies in the MCU. And that's, MCU. And that's not good, apparently. And so they have taken to their keyboards and have said, make my Marvel mail again. This is what happens when people get a voice. <laughs> I think all mo- uh, people with consciences start leaving Twitter. Right. Twitter becomes a nastier place really quick. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And more people are boisterous on hate stuff. Emboldened, we'll yeah. say. Right. So um, if you believe that Marvel should make uh, it more men-leaning films, books, whatever, you can just turn this podcast off because we are anti that bullshit. Hold, hold on now, Greg. Oh, here we don't, go. Don't. 
don't be so hasty. Because I'll I'll let it be all dudes as long as they're all kissing. <laughs> There's the way to combat it. That's they're what like, I'm saying. No, no, too many dudes. You want all girls? We'll get, all, we'll get every girl out of there. But now you have to watch Thor and Captain America kiss for like 45 minutes. Ah, Kevin Feige has gotten my fanfic. <laughs> Mjolnir, indeed. Mm. He is worthy. Avengers, assemble. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I saw that in the bone me out. Yeah, totally. Uh, we also got in the Detective Comics annual number one, the historical name for Gotham when it first was established in colonial times. Oh, okay. And it is the most unoriginal, uninspiring name. Batten. It is Gotthom. Is that G-A-T-H-O-M-E. like a German thing? H O M E. What is it? Does it mean something? I think it's just like colonial way to to spell Gotham. It, it didn't really oh, go. In. Yeah. H O M E. Yeah. So like, like we got home. Yeah. We, we found, got him. We found our home. We finally got home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rom V responsible for this. He is. Okay. Don't break down his door or send him nasty emails. It's just how things go in colonial times. Hey, he's leaving his mark. It is on old Gotham. So, like historically, that makes like a ton of sense. Like sure. that's how names would evolve and become what they are now. Real missed opportunity for a real, real wacky ass name. <laughs> and, you know, so oh, take our city for example, Kansas City. Yes, used to be known as Fergan. <laughs> Fergan. Mm-hmm. It was found by James and Tim Fergan. They were brothers. Oh, I hadn't heard this. They killed each other with the same fork. Is this a bit? This is a bit. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. You've been bit. Well, the, It's a new segment <laughs> of the show called You Got Bit. The, the real old name of Kansas City is stupider than the bit. Oh. oh pa- it's I, Possum Trot. <laughs> is this a bit? Now listen. I'm no. not from here. <laughs> I, I had Taco Bell last night and had Possum Trot. <laughs> Is it really our yeah. name, Possum Trot? We used to call this area Possum Trot. Is that, is that it like, was the style of the home. Is that like derogatory? That got, no. The, so the- <laughs> Don't go, Oh, you're going to Possum Trot, Jesus Christ. <laughs> a lot of the homes that were built in early Kansas and Missouri- Yeah, were made with shit? What? <laughs> had a gap in the middle. So it was like two separate establishments mm-hmm. with a connecting arch roof. Mm-hmm. And then that left kind of like a breezeway between the homes- and so they called it a possum trot because wildlife just like walks up on your patio in between the houses all the time. Interesting. That is one, not a bit, listeners. Right. Two, mildly interesting. <laughs> right. Exactly right. Yeah. That is the right amount of interesting to go, okay. There's your Midwest fun fact of the day. Possum trot. I like that they had the opportunity to rename the city and they were like, what do we name this Missouri town that's on the border of Kansas? Kansas City. Kansas City. The guy who came up with Possum Trot is just like, I, wait, how, I, can we no, just- Do we really want to step away from Possum Trot, guys? <laughs> uh, another fun fact. About- Can- Kansas City. Named Kansas City before the state of Kansas was named. Mm. Did they name the state after the city? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, so well, Missouri is it, superior. Can, so Kansas is an uh, indigenous American mm-hmm. tribe. So um, Kansas City named after them, <laughs> So obviously. after we killed them all, I'm assuming, and right. stole Memorial. their land. <laughs> uh, and then um, Kansas City was becoming a popular hub. Mm-hmm. They leached off of that, tried to get some action Get everybody to Kansas. Yep. Exciting, big, exciting Kansas. And then they got there, and we're just like, whoops. No yeah. abortions. Man, this place sucks. <laughs> you mean it's this flat and the beer's how much? <laughs> Kansas. Sorry we suck. That's their motto. Uh, another news, Marvel's queer Captain America is returning for a mystery project. We oh, covered great. this earlier in the year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, uh, like... Captain America went on a cross-country journey to find his shield that was stolen from him, and he ran across several people who were inspired by him as a hero. Yes. We had, like, a native Captain American, a queer Captain America, and I think two others. I think one was a... Lady Captain America. Oh, oh, taboo. (laughs) Uh, And so the creator, uh, Josh Trulio, said 
he's coming back for a project. Can't really say what. Um, so look forward to that in 2023. I was so entertained by that character because he was, uh, in all senses, like a, a train, crust punk, a train hopping crust punk. Yeah, <laughs> like, he fucking ruled. Like the the character design was spot on. His mm-hmm. whole like deal was spot on. I kind of hope his Robin is like a mangy dog or something, <laughs> like his sidekick. <laughs> His Bucky. Yeah, his Bucky yeah. is like a banjo with like Bright Eyes lyrics on it or something. <laughs> or their or his wealthy parents trust fund. <laughs> then he's That is a thing him. about some crust punks. Yeah. That their parents are uber rich. Why else would you take a risk like just <laughs> toting around America? Toting around the country like you've got no like uh worries in care the world. in the world. Maybe it's because you have no care in the world because your parents are loaded. I get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you you listen to too much Bob Dylan as a yeah. kid, and you're just like, yeah, I am going to ride the trains for a while. <laughs> just fucking do drugs in your basement and grow up. Ugh. Any crust punks listening to this show? <laughs> <laughs> Take that, crust punks. And then lastly, this is a local thing. Planet Comic Con is our local con. <laughs> oh, we're finally getting to something local. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Possum Trot Comic Con. <laughs> Uh, j- the creators have started beginning have begun getting released. We got um, Amanda Connor and um, Jim Palmiotti. Yes, and your buddy Chris Claremont is coming, and Roy Thomas, and Roy Thomas, and um, some other movie and like TV people. Like I think, uh, well, what's his face? Captain Kirk's going to be here. Yeah. Wow, really? William Shatner. That's yep. the guy I'm thinking of. All right, yeah. William Shatner, the cool. Shatner man. I didn't know he was still doing. He's so old now. He's been to space though, so I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna ask him about that. Greg, that was a TV show. <laughs> no, no, no. He trekked all the way to the stars. <laughs> he kissed a green woman. No. <laughs> and so I think what I'm gonna be doing is every new creator that gets released, I'm gonna announce it on the show because we got a lot of local people that listen, so we can get excited about yeah pulling comics out of your collection to have them either signed or whatever. So it should be a good time. Did you see the cast reunion that's happening at C2E2? C2E2 cast reunion of? Boy Meets World. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. It's kind of fun. I Wait. haven't bought tickets to it, but I don't know that I'll go this year. I'm going to get my Detective 27 signed by the cast of Boy Meets World. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, is this mentioned? But Nope. That's just, you know, ran out of paper. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I didn't want to pay for the for the headshot, so sign this well, one comic. The Patreon will be funding that because we, you'll need a CGC verifier uh, yes. <laughs> with every signature. Hi, can you sign it, Mister Feeney, <laughs> instead of your real name, sir? Hey, man, one out of one. That's gonna be the only one on eBay. <laughs> You'd be on surprised. eBay, yeah, <laughs> only one on Census. Rare, hot I, variant. <laughs> I think it's so funny, <laughs> Topanga variant. When somebody's like. <laughs> A profit three graded a four point oh, and then they put like only one on census. It's like because it, no one in their right mind would yeah, get no that shit. graded otherwise. It looks like it got ran over by a truck, dummy. Yeah, right. If your idea is only having like a one of one of something mm-hmm. graded, then I don't know, rip a cover of some random nineties comic and send it in. <laughs> so stupid. Anyway, cool. Boy meets world. Yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my only thing that. I thought was interesting was that I saw a deadline article that said with Bob Iger coming back to Disney, um, there some people expecting changes that the Marvel Studios and Star Wars productions might slow their roll a little bit. Fucking about time. Yeah, because I I think they were I, the I can't remember the exact numbers I read, but it was something like for the Infinity Saga. There were 23 releases over 11 years, Mm -hmm. and in the past two years, there have been 19 MCU releases. Now that is including like, like the Groot series of shorts, yeah, and a couple other things that aren't like major releases. But still, 19 things in two years is like nonstop, (laughs) very saturated, very expedited, and a lot of people have been saying that they'd prefer online anyway, or this article cites that some people are wanting more quality over quantity. I haven't had many things in the MCU that I've watched recently that I've been like, that was bad. Um, So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about like going to 
less is more quality over quantity mm-hmm. um when i don't necessarily think well that's a lot a, of the marvel things that have been coming out are like well it's, it's a hypothetical too quality. we don't we don't, we don't really know yeah i mean bob Iger could be like well it's fine whatever yeah <laughs> like, i'm right. just here to make sure no one does anything stupid mm-hmm. you guys want my hot take on that Tell hold me. on i'm ready i think a lot of people just want the hype machine back oh like, explain like Infinity War and Endgame were like events, like cultural events. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean part of it is COVID, but like the other part of it, like with with a movie coming out every four months or three months or you know, there's something all the time, you don't get the like year and a half build up we had mm-hmm. for Endgame. And I think people want that. Whether it's a perception of quality or actual quality, mm-hmm. they they want the build up uh, and, and the anticipation again. And uh, I hear that, and I also think that a lot of people's gripes, which I don't valid or invalid, I'm not making, I'm not going to make that point right now. But like everyone's just like, well, what are we headed towards? Because like we always had like Thanos, yeah. and it's just like, first of all, get your head out of your ass, because we did not always have Thanos. <laughs> like you had him as a maybe. Yeah. He wasn't even as like a for sure route we were headed towards. Mm-hmm. But we do actually have a route we're headed towards with phase four and the, you know, consecutive phases after that. So um maybe just kind of pump the brakes and just enjoy the ride. Because with the first Iron Man, Captain America, all that, like mm-hmm. Thanos wasn't even uh inkling. Yeah. You maybe got a hint of him at the end of a trailer or whatever. But yeah. I mean there's a clear path of where we're headed right now yeah would would she hulk have been infinitely better if at the end somebody came out and they were like better watch out for those thunderbolts Wink. <laughs> yeah like, i mean no <laughs> seriously just like man and this I, sure spells out doom for and, us yeah and honestly that's what a, a lot of the um m- movies with infinity stone stuff yeah kind of boiled up to like there was like a weird red cloud in the second Thor movie, Thor the Dark World, is that what it was called? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were just like, now that cloud of goop is an Infinity Stone. Right. It could have been anything. Gotcha. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Infinity Stone. It's just like a little thing to tag on the end. Yeah. No, I hear you. And it's just like, I think people- That's pe- a really good point, Vargas. Yeah. Yeah, Vargas, yeah. You know, every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. <laughs> <laughs> what a saying. <laughs> That's a saying right out of a possum trot <laughs> book. Po- it, possum trot sounds like a band, like a Grateful Dead cover band. No, it sounds like a euphemism for the shits. You had a, you nailed it in one, Greg. Okay. I guess I'll quit <laughs> pump, punching it up. <laughs> I'll quit workshopping it. Well, I'm ready to get to books. All right, let's do it. Can you start? Boop, boop, boop. We're getting the books, getting the books. This is the part of the show where we get the books. Okay, so if you never want to hear that jingle again, send us one for moving to books because we need a song to interlude this segment. Yes, any musicians out there that want their shit played, we'll say your name, we'll link you. Go to firstissueclub at gmail.com, firstissueclubpodcast at gmail.com. Oh, close one. Give us your best tunage for our book segment we couldn't get first issue club at gmail.com i didn't think about it and just added podcast i didn't want to confuse my gmail (laughs) all right sure first issue club at gmail.com is just for like my spam folder just like where i go to (laughs) sign up for free windows or gutters at uh, (laughs) comic-con that's where all my junk mail goes to first book i read was plush by image comics from doug wagner daniel hilliard Rico Renez and Ed Dukeshire. Ed Dukeshire with the most badass last name ever, Dukeshire. Uh, this is the team that did Plastic and Vinyl. Um, it is about a moida that happens while this guy is on a drug-induced trip that his friend drugged his drink while they are in furry outfits. Have I lost you? No, I'm following so far. Okay. I was hoping, based on like the name and cover, that this was going to be like a furry thing. Yes. So while in his fursona, he sees like a murder happen, but like these furries are eating another furry, like oh blood God. and guts style. Ugh. 
Then you get a side story of like local sheriff is like uh, kind of pressing him to marry his daughter who he's dating, but she has is having the baby of the sheriff's son who is the deputy. Wow. It is a it is a tangled mess that we weave and that this guy finds himself in. And at the end of the book, he's like in the jail cell because people think that he was a part of the killing. The killing, or like he was on like some kind of drug trip, and so they just put him there to like kind of cool off from his drug trip. In any case, one of the plushies from the murder that he sees is in there to spring him because I think the deputy wants to beat him up while in the jail cell to like get the wife who he impregnated or the girlfriend to to marry him. Yeah. Anyway, it's a trip. In yeah, this that's book, a lot. The book was sh- super short. Okay, it communicated a lot in a little bit of time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very good at that. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you get uh, this is like just a taste of a giant meal we're gonna get, and so um, this is the uh, an instance where I think uh, a double issue would have been gangbusters. Yeah. And sometimes Image does this, and in this case, they did not. Now let me ask you this, please. You. Did not did not like Lovesick because of how graphic it was. Mm-hmm. Where is this book on that spectrum, and how is it different for you? So, Plush follows like it, from the solicitations from the next couple months. Uh-huh. It looks more of like a demonic possession. Okay, who done it? Murder mystery in the fursona community or the furry community. Okay, it's not like an ongoing torture cannibalism thing. There's no and okay. like so like yeah, where lovesick and like red room were different is like it is built upon a community that um rests itself in non consensual torture. Red room specifically, these people those people were captured. They yeah. were tortured. For a dark web chat room, like, uh, snuff yeah, film thing. Right. I'm not down with that. I don't clown with that. Right. Um, I believe that Lovesick is a different take on kind of the snuff uh, film, Red Room, dark, uh, sorry, dark yeah. web story. You know what? Story? It, it starts with people who are consenting to be involved. So, well, and then it, and then yes, it goes to yeah. a place where it's like it's like a vengeance story. It's, it becomes a vengeance thing where there's like these toxic people, mm-hmm. and she's taking revenge on them by killing them on camera. The so like the issue one of Lovesick was very unsettling. So yeah. and I I think it was supposed to be. It was supposed right. to like solicit this reaction that was very visceral and like very unnerving, and I. I'm, I have issue two at home because I pre-ordered it. I'm leery of starting it because I, I did read Red Room, and I I hated Red Room. I hated Red Room as well. Ed Pisker, for whatever reason, incredible artist. This story of Red Room is just terrible. It's not redeeming in any way, and it's just an excuse to draw the most depraved thing you possibly could think of. Yeah. And I'm not really a prudish guy, but that shit... Just ain't for me, dog. Yeah. And so I think those two are in a different kind of subsect of story. Plush is going to be, I think, more of a in line with plastic and vinyl of like, yes, there is gruesome imagery, Uh but the story behind it is more of a uh, whodunit, figure it out as you go reader thing. And, And... it's more story driven than like yeah. visceral imagery. Okay, can I ask you this? This is my other thing. Yeah. Is it making fun of furries? No, not in the least. I love that. No. It's very um like uh it's a very forward thinking book as far as uh different sex of yep. um fandom. Yes. Because a fur if you are a furry or you have a fursona, that is a fandom that you uh, are in. Yeah. There are kinks in that community. And there are some kind of like sexual things to yep. it if you wish to go that route. Yeah. Which there are sexual things in any fandom if you look mm-hmm. hard enough. <laughs> I think six years ago, um, when we started this podcast, yeah. I think it's been about six years. Mm-hmm. Five or six, yeah. Um, I could I could see of us clowning on 
a, mm-hmm. a furry community or something. Yeah. But, and I think a lot of people still do. And yeah. I think things have changed for me where I'm just realizing that there's um, communities of people who are into different stuff and that's what they're into when they're not hurting anyone else. Right. Except for in the case where they're murdering and cannibalizing in this right. comic book. <laughs> I, I would I would so soon dunk on a crypto bro than someone who has a fursona and walks around just being themselves. Yeah. Because those dudes aren't hurting anybody. And right. And crypto bros are just a nuisance. <laughs> you don't need to explain to me what an NFT is. I know what an NFT uh, yeah. is, and I don't care. It's a fucking JPEG. <laughs> yeah. And I have it now. It's For a re- free. It's a receipt is what it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a receipt for your laundered money. Uh, I saw a meme the other day that was like sick. A dude, yeah, I know. Uh, now we're getting into our segment, <laughs> segment meme talks, <laughs> <laughs> where, where we talk about the dankest memes. Um, I saw one the other day that was a guy telling a, a woman that uh, her astrology stuff was bullshit and she was just like should we talk about crypto oh nice like, <laughs> yeah in response to that your made up thing mm-hmm. <laughs> that you can't stop your talking makeup, about your made up thing is not as good as my made up thing that so was pretty fuck off <laughs> now let's talk about comic books yeah <laughs> the only real thing in our lives uh, I also read Planet Hulk, Planet Hulk World Breaker by Greg Pak Manuel Gar- Garcia Cam Smith and Chris Sotomayor uh this is a hard one. Okay, I was about to ask, is this, like, in canon with the Hulk run that's going on right now, or is this a whole separate thing? Or are you Ugh. not sure? Uh, so it is in canon, and we go back to Sakaar mm-hmm. a thousand years in the future. Oh, whoa. And so uh, there are many, like, uh, uh, Hulk people are being, like, villainized on Sakaar now. Mm-hmm. Like, they're being hunted down because uh, the World Breaker, a.k.a. the Hulk, mm-hmm. um, is, like, seen as the whole reason why Sakaar is as it is now, which is, like, basically destroyed. Okay, is Bruce Banner still alive in this situation? The teaser at the end makes you think that he is. Okay. Because it, it shows a picture from the back of a completely nude man meditating by a lava pit. Now, if that doesn't scream Bruce Banner, <laughs> I don't it's really know what does. got to be him. Yes. So I think he is uh, there getting in touch and lining up his chakra. Yep. And um, Amadeus Chow is also there. Hell yeah. Um, and he's like, uh, the, the one of the characters in there calls him Grandpa because I guess is like, he, she's like a descendant from Amadeus Chow. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, they're kind of like torturing himself because like he was responsible f- for like why Sakar is also destroyed because like the people on Sakar don't know the real story of why all this shit's kind of fucked up, which mm-hmm. is like I think maybe Bruce Banner and him had to team up and do so- I-, I don't really know much Hulk stuff. So it was a interesting read. I f- I feel like if I read more Hulk, I would be like, oh fuck yeah, but mm-hmm. I mean, so it it sounds like it doesn't even really spin off of like the original Planet Hulk or even like World War Hulk. Well, it it kind of well it I think it uh, can because it's set a thousand years in the future. Right. But it also goes to Earth when Scar mm-hmm. is like a kid. Okay. But like when he hulks out, does he get bigger? Is I mean, that is that what his thing is? Yeah, kind of. So like it's him. On Earth with like She Hulk, uh-huh. and he's like, people don't want me here because I'm a Hulk and like I could hurt them. And then like he saves somebody and he's like, I guess I'll stay. And I'm at the, so that's like the the tag end story of the book. I'm just like, ah, well, I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but it seems fun, <laughs> so I'm just gonna stick with it. Well, I guess Hulks never die. Still, Hulks never say die, just like Wolverines. I thought the green door was closed, but hey, maybe not. Well, I mean, like, yeah, because. I don't know. It'll get figured out. It was. I had a really hard time with the last issue of Immortal Hulk. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I think Al Ewing was just like contractually, 
I have to end this. At I some have to point. say it like this I so mean, they can maybe bring him back. I went. I went. I looked for so many articles on that where I was like, everyone was talking about how brilliant it was. And I was like, can someone tell me what happened, though? <laughs> yeah, you're like, but what's it? <laughs> I read it like three times, and I was like, I still don't quite get what I'm supposed to take away from it. But I, it was a beautiful series. Yeah. I loved it. Do you think it was a take on, like, um... On uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> the, we're, the, we're the Hulk. we find out. <laughs> the real Hulks are the friends we made <laughs> along the way. No, it's like, uh, um... Uh, uh, what, uh, you, you don't you know, like you never die. You come back as something. What's that called? Reincarnation. Reincarnation. You think like that was like the point they're trying to make? Just like hey, Hulks, <laughs> Hulks never say die. <laughs> Just like Goonies. <laughs> Just like Goonies, not the Wolverines. What am I doing? <laughs> I think it was something that I think it was more like. Are we? We're talking about Immortal Hulk specifically. Sure. I think it was more like you can't escape your. Uh, past or your destiny mm-hmm. because you found that there were like r- wicked roots in his family history mm-hmm. that kind of led him on this course were like somewhat of a reveal but the cosmic stuff and how that was related to the cosmic stuff like I don't really have an idea right you think that was just like a back door for people to come and bring Bruce back or something? I don't know. Like I said, we're very dumb. So I'm I might have to read the Omni. I think it's coming out. If it hasn't already come out, it's coming out in a month or two. Oh, nice. Okay. So maybe if I reread it all together. That's another one of those things that sometimes when these books are a month or two apart and they're really complex, they're just so hard to interpret. I'm reading that in trade and it definitely seems like it's a better read in yeah. trade. I need to reread it, I think. Um, some on the Discord we were talking about I was talking about how I didn't like um Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars because I was like I couldn't make heads or tails of it. Mm-hmm. And someone was like, You should give it another shot. I can't remember who. It was probably me. Was it you? <laughs> Dude, I loved Secret Wars. And so I read it uh again. And it was great. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, there we go. <laughs> Reading it like back to back to back, I was like, "Oh shit, this is fantastic!" But <laughs> the, when it was coming out, they were like two months apart, three months apart. Sometimes oh, right. they were like they had an awful release schedule. Yeah. And anytime you're like glomming worlds together and like battle world and dealing with those sort of stories, like that was so hard to follow month to month. Right. But, yeah, reading back to back, it was fantastic. Secret Wars 2015 rules. Yeah. It and was all really the Battle good. World stuff rules, too. Yeah. First is your club. Yeah. Stance. Yeah. Fight me, nerds. <laughs> I actually don't think you'll find much nerds that disagree with you on that. Good. I think a lot of people really enjoy the 2015 Secret Wars. Good. Give me more charts and graphs in my comic books, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hickman <laughs> has a ton of them. And the last book I read, which I think, Andy, you read, too, was Avengers Assemble Alpha by Jason Aaron, Brian Hitch, Andrew Curry, and Alex Sinclair. If you are not liking the Jason Aaron Avengers big overarching story, I do not fucking care. Yeah. This book is way too much fun for its own good. fight me on that, nerds. I do not get what everyone's beef is with. The nope. Jason Aaron Avengers run. It's it is good. a goofy ass fun time. Yeah. Different multiverses of mm-hmm. like amalgamations of different villains and heroes, and it is fucking rad. It is so fun. And Avengers Alpha is right in line with it. You got Doom Prime or whatever looking sick as shit. You got like Dark Phoenix, which is like this like masked. E- Phoenix Entity, uh-huh. which is like right out of a Hellraiser movie. It's a good time. Just enjoy it. Let it wash over you. Yeah. Don't don't worry about continuity. You pretentious nerds. Yeah. Don't don't worry about. Oh, but um, actually, two issues ago, Captain America was supposed to. No, fuck that. Yeah. Just. We're let, making it up. It's let fun. It, let it happen. Because <laughs> the whole Jason Aaron run has been like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but did Moon Knight take over the world for four months? Yeah, he sure did. He did, sure as hell did. Did we talk about it in any other book? Yeah, Moon Knight. <laughs> maybe but nothing maybe else. Maybe Savage Avengers. <laughs> it's fun. It's so good. It's fun stuff. I know there was an issue recently where um, maybe it was the one you read that some of the 
ten thousand BC, million BC, million BC stuff has some up- comeuppance. They are in this char- one. They're in. They're in a symbol okay. uh, Alpha. Cool. That's like that's like the whole bit with Avengers Assemble is it's going to tie together the storylines of Avengers, Avengers Forever, Avengers One Million, mm-hmm. like all that stuff's coming yeah. together. He's right, tying a big ahead. old fun ass bow on his whole run. He, yeah. Do you remember when he introduced those characters? That was like five or six years ago. Yeah, that was in uh, was Marvel it, Legacy. Was it Legacy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And they. We're sick as hell. That's when they were do. Remember when Marvel had those awful lenticular covers? Yes, we don't talk about that. It was around then. Yes, they have a lot of them. Are (laughs) bad. Yes, you can't. The the lenticular lines are so fine that you that you that you cannot see (laughs) one cover or the other at any given time. Correct. It's always a horrific blend of two pieces of art that no one will get to enjoy. You're just like, oh, this sucks. <laughs> when I first moved to Kansas City, I used to go to this comic shop over on 64th Street in Northtown. And yeah. it was great. It was a great shop. I loved it. Uh, they had to close because they ordered so many lenticular covers oh, no. that they couldn't sell them. So when I went to their closing sale, they had every single one of them, mm-hmm. like a long box full, and they were selling them for a buck a piece. So I've got like all of them. Oh my That's god! That's great. Good for you. Bad for them. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. In any case, yeah. Jason Aaron is just wrapping up this big like cross Avengers book event. Uh, it'll be done by I think April. They said in twenty twenty three, and it's it it's gonna. If you don't like it now, you're sure as shit not gonna like the next four months. Yeah. <laughs> because it's gonna be a lot of the same. Well, if you don't like, you've already made up your mind. If you right. don't like Avengers, you're not you're not reading it, and you don't care. And honestly, I've tried to engage people with this online who are just like, "Oh, it's not good." I'm just like, "What are you not liking about it?" Yeah. What are like? Do you not like fun? <laughs> do you not like? Because what are you basing it off of, and what are you comparing it next to? Yeah. Because Jason Aaron isn't trying to do a Hickman run or a Burbaker run or any. Uh, he's making a Jason Aaron Avengers run. And fucking slaps from issue one. Yeah. So I don't know what you're expecting. And I don't know what you can, you know, well, I don't know what can make these people happy yeah. or who can write it next. They're just like, oh, hell yeah. Neil Gaiman's doing fucking Avengers. Sick. A two year run where it all, yeah. whatever. It's all in Wolverine's head. Sad, yeah. Sad boy Avengers. <laughs> I would read Neil Gaiman's Avengers. Though. I think Donnie Cates is next. Good. I think that's the rumor. Oh, yeah. It'll really tame down then. We'll get a real somber <laughs> yeah. take on the Avengers. A real down-to-earth Avengers <laughs> yeah. story with Donny Cates. It, yeah, uh, let me pose this question before I, I tap out. Who would your dream casting be for the next writer of Avengers be after Jason Aaron? Who's doing a fantastic job? Jason, I, I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jason. Yeah. I would put the classic duo. Oh, we're going, okay. Of Mark Wade and Chris Samney on the <sighs> Avengers. That would be solid. That, that would yeah. be really solid. I love those two together. It's a slapper. Yeah. I would put Chip Zdarsky and Dan Mora oh. as my Avengers team. I want Grant Morrison okay. and Frank Quitely. Oh, to do an Avengers. Can you run. imagine yeah, Frank Quitely? Three very different Avengers yeah. comics. Yeah. <laughs> or Raphael Grandpa. Do, Can if, you? Holy shit! Every page would have to be a two-page spread, <laughs> and it, every issue would take four months to come yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be so good. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I think Kelly Thompson could do a good Avengers run for sure. I think Kelly Thompson deserves though her own thing. She needs – give her her g- own team and let her run wild. Well, the, I'm bummed they took West Coast Avengers away. Yeah. And Black Widow. Like, they keep yeah. taking stuff – like, she's been making incredible Marvel books, and they've just been canning them. Yeah. I think she's got her own creator own book coming out soon. Yes, Black Cloak. Is that what it's called? Out okay. on Image. It was her substack. Oh, okay. That's I didn't realize that. That's out on Image. Got so it. Cool. We'll be sh- 100% covering that. Yeah. Maybe I should reach out to her, see if she wants to come on the show and talk about it. Hell yeah. That gets a hell yeah from me, dog. Okay. Woo, 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 woo. She came on the show once before, and I was too nervous. 
I thought it was a great episode, though. You think so? Mm-hmm. Mark I, Sable retweeted us. I felt uh, really embarrassed afterwards because I was like, I fanned out too much. I think, well, I think. And I couldn't keep my cool. <laughs> I'm a huge Kelly Thompson you, fan. Are you mad you weren't like just smoking a cigarette and loof the whole time? <laughs> oh, Kelly, you're still here. Uh, <laughs> pff, I don't know. Uh, like, do you want to talk about something? Like, what? I what, think. Do you like comics? Or? Here's, here's my thing. I think, um, I think I at least over prepared mm-hmm. that I was like, what are good questions that I can ask Kelly Thompson? When instead, like, once we ran out of questions mm-hmm. and I was more like shooting the shit. Yeah, and I was more shooting the shit and I was more like, actually, like, there's this one thing about this character, like, right. or like, hey, when you did, like, Star has like a story in the Infinity Stones, like, is there a key, like, does Marvel assign you that, or do you say, hey, I want to add the Infinity Stone? Like, I wish I just would have asked her more... Personal questions? Fun questions. Kelly, what's your pin number? Fun questions about, like, stuff like that, that I just, like, wonder about, like, the inner workings of Marvel and how plot points got put into her story. Mm-hmm. More about, like, big questions on, like, her history or her career. Like, sure. we've heard that stuff, and, like... Every comic book creator interviews almost the same. It's hard not to be though, cause but you, like, but it it doesn't have to be if you ask about like the you know nuances of like the Captain Marvel series that I love, and mm-hmm. it's like if I could go back and do that interview again, right? I would just talk talk to her like explicitly about baseball, <laughs> writing writing Star and Captain Marvel, and like why she made this decision and that decision, and was this character fun to write and. Sounds like a good opportunity for interview number two. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Redemption, redemption. <laughs> Our mics will be muted. Too much pressure. I think, yeah, I think doing a, a interview solo is very daunting. Yeah. I had to do one once solo, but Andy was in the room. Uh, uh, oh, the yeah. The guy named Zach Quaintance, he's, uh, he's not a writer for Comics Beat, but he did that uh, Kickstarter book, mm-hmm. and I was... He, he does a comics bookcase. Yes, he does. Yeah. yeah. And a uh, great website and fantastic person in the comic book community. Yeah. If you want, you know, a reliable source for comic book shit, go check him out. Uh, but I was nervous the whole time interviewing that guy. <laughs> and you had an audience. <laughs> yeah. I had any there just like, you're doing good. You're doing fine. <laughs> yeah. Give me thumbs up. And I was just like <laughs> vomiting on the mic. <laughs> so those are the books I read. All right. Right on. I, I read uh, the new Fantastic Four number one. Which was probably onto its second issue by now. Um, those beautiful Alex Ross. Covers. Oh, I love the neons in those covers, and they give—they are so truly Alex Ross's style, mm-hmm. but pay so somehow simultaneously pay so much homage to Jack Kirby, and the way he's found out how to do that in his style with that yeah. color palette is insane they're like so impressive and his i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head but he just did like a full circle full circle that like hardback Mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah. graphic novel of the fantastic four that it just looks like killer um it's also huge yeah full circle is like a coffee-sized table book yeah it's ginormous (laughs) um so this fantastic four book have either of you guys read it i did I loved it, and I don't know what the rest of the series is going to be like, but it was a standalone single story that was a really intimate um, adventure with the Thing and his wife, Alicia. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, And they go to a town that's stuck in a time loop, and they got to identify who's causing the time loop so they can get out of it. And I don't know. It's just like... It, it reads so much like a pulp classic sci-fi, and it's got your a character you're familiar with and love already. There's so many things about it that like warmed my heart and made me feel like I was reading comics as a kid. Right. It was such a good like standalone issue. Did Alex Ross write it? No, I think um, <coughs> North is the writer's last name. Oh, Ryan, it's North. Ryan North. Yeah, it's yeah, Ryan yeah. North. Um, I don't know much about him or what else he's written. Maybe that might be embarrassing to admit if there's something big that he's written. 
obviously he's writing Fantastic Four. He's done something okay. <laughs> You've angered Andy, Andy's, and now he's coughing. Andy's having one of his God. fits. Sorry, boys. <laughs> uh, he wrote Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl. That yeah. was okay, big, great. Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Yeah, that's a yeah. great series. Um, so big time recommend on that. Even if you're not a Fantastic Four fan, um, I say pick up that issue. I and, think it's gonna be it's an on, it's the new one. ongoing, right? It is the new ongoing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but I had to like start that book over like four times because <laughs> it starts out and it's like four panels on a page, mm-hmm. and then the next page is the same four panels. I once I got <laughs> once I got to the third one, I was like, did I get a misprint? Yeah, I did too. <laughs> rich. I, I was like, what I'm the rich. hell is this? I literally googled it, and Fantastic Four misprint was the first hit on Google. So like. Kudos to Ryan for yeah. writing that. Yeah, the best prank of all time. Once, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once you've you made a nerd Google. In retrospect, it's be- the way it starts is beautiful. Uh huh. So. Yeah, it, yeah, really fun book. I like. It kind of did the same thing that. Um, uh, who who's writing Spider Man right now? They did the thing where it's like, oh, Peter did something. Yes, there's and you that don't know thread what it is. at the end of the book where it's like there Reed is. Richards yeah. did something. And you don't know what it is, and that's kind of the way you find out the reason that Ben Grimm and Alicia Masters are like away from the rest of the FF. Yeah, who is writing Spider Man right now? It's the guy who he was the uh, one of the head writers on She Hulk. No, He's Dan Slott's writing Spider Man, but who's writing Amazing? Yeah, this is the guy who's one of the head writers on the She Hulk TV show. Oh, oh. Uh, really? Yes, and he's dating is Heidi, Zeb, is Heidi, Gardner, Heidi Gardner from yes. SNL. Okay, so Zeb Wells is it Zeb Wells? Yeah, I okay. think that's right. Oh, yeah, duh. Yeah, I didn't know he was dating. The Zeb good man. for him. Yeah, not not only is this a comic book podcast, but this is also a like a TMZ for yeah. SNL uh-huh. dating uh, breaking news. I can't always name comic book artists, but I always know who they're in a relationship with. I know, with. always know who they're dating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and then the other book that I read that I'll shout out is Dead Mall. And I want to say it was on Dark Horse, maybe? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the writer's name off the top of my head. But I thought it was kind of worth shouting out because it was just a fun book book i really like the shining this felt like the shining in a rundown mall like these teenagers break into an old mall and most of the dialogue in the book seems to be the mall's narration of like i can control this i like i'm gonna like (laughs) finally we've got some kids here I, I decide when the Orange Julius opens yeah, and nobody else. I, th- I think you, I, I'm not sure exactly like what the bigger message here is here. I'm, I think there's probably something to be said about it. About like commerce. Being and, about commerce yeah. and um, eating like the energy of people or like mm, the mm-hmm. wickedness of what, Consumerism. Gets br- what gets brought out of people. Yeah. But in this. <laughs> it's like me at Thanksgiving. It's like since the mall has been run down and closed for so long, it's methods for like it's very hungry eating. Be- yeah, it's like very hungry, right? Uh, and it it was just a really fun read. Cool. Um, felt really. It, it definitely feels like an independent book that is probably a, a mini, mm-hmm. um, but it sounds like still an, worth a buy. I think it sounds like an even more literal version of like Dawn of the Dead. Where the, where they're trapped in a mall, the zombies are like yeah right in blind in blind consumers yeah exactly yes. going through the motions. But this is like yeah the mall is this is what George mall. Romero really wanted yeah. to do yeah the mall <laughs> he's is... like the studio wouldn't green light me for a zombie building so <laughs> the mall is the monster yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool as that it always legit. is yeah <laughs> that sounds super legit the mall is the monster and now is that a band. <laughs> We got Possum Trot. We possum got the Mall Trot, is a the Monster. The monster. <laughs> that different band, like different sounds from those individual bands. Mm-hmm. Possum Trot's more of your folk, yep. kind of hey ho band. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, 
Yeah. yeah, Lumineers. Yeah, and then uh, Maul is a monster is like bullet for my Valentine. Yeah, that gets played in in every hot topic. Exactly. <laughs> if you don't have a studded black and white checkered belt while listening to Maul is a monster, you're a poser. Fake, counterfeit. <laughs> I read Blade Vampire Nation mm-hmm. um, because I have been so stoked for something to happen with Blade <laughs> since 2019. Yeah. Uh, spinning out of Jason Aaron's Avengers, they did- The greatest Avengers run, <laughs> possibly the last 10 years. Yeah, because he's like been the only writer he's for been the last- the only writer for like the last five. <laughs> yeah. So back in 2019, Jason wrote, uh, thank you for listening, Jason. Um, <laughs> Longtime fan. War of the Vampires. Possible patron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where- Dracula had the like super vampire team and he tried to take over oh, the yeah, world. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that was fun. Did that whole thing. Blade joined the Avengers, but at the end of it, Blade gets named the sheriff of the sovereign nation of the vampires, which is in like the husk of Chernobyl. And this one shot finally pays that off. Mm-hmm. So it's written by Mark Russell, great writer. Oh, yeah, fantastic Club favorite. Dave Watcher did the art, mm-hmm. and D. Canefe, okay, never heard of him. Uh, did the colors, and this book is so good, and I'm so upset that it's only a one shot. Um, it's like a murder mystery noir mm-hmm. s- with Blade as the protagonist set in a vampire nation. Um, there's an assassin. Va- vampire Nation deserves to be its own series at the- Marvel. I, for real, it does. <laughs> like, that's incredible. Like, if Krakoa can get its own, like, series, like, yeah. Vampire Nation seems like it's just complete out into so many avenues. Well, and especially, so, like, let me tell you the plot, right? Blade gets contacted by Dracula because he's. He's the sheriff. He's like, I'm going to make sure that the, you guys, you are vampires. This is a sovereign nation. I'm not going to go in there and murder you all. Y'all are rooting tooting in here. <laughs> I come. I, I am going to yeet your last haul. <laughs> yeah, you sons of bitches. <laughs> but Blade gets pulled in by Dracula because Dracula is the head of state. And he says, mm-hmm. hey, there was an assassination attempt on me. <laughs> a, a member of the vampire ca- council was killed. Mm-hmm. Find out who did it. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the story is Blade you know, kind of neo noiring down the streets, you know, putting the squeeze on, you know, his. <laughs> on shifty vampires. Yeah. <laughs> doing for... back alley deals. Yeah. You know, trying to figure out who did this. And he, you know, there's a team of mercenaries that gets brought in. And okay, well, who, who paid the mercenaries? Mm-hmm. You know, it's this whole thread. And, you know, it ends up with Blade and Dracula just like talking in the office after Blade figures out, you know, kind of who done it. And I don't want to spoil anything, but like, Man, this sh- kiss. Well, this should have been an ongoing with yes. with Blade hating everything about Dracula, Dracula hating everything about Blade, mm-hmm. but they can't do anything to each other yeah. because of the power struggle they're in. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's cool. Co- a couple things. Being the sheriff of Vampire Nation m- has to be a pretty easy job because during the day you yeah. can do whatever you want. You can go to like Coles or whatever. <laughs> you can go like just be left to your own devices. Yeah, but no one's working. The, no one has to be during the day. Yeah, that's they're all he, asleep. He can't buy any pants. He can. He, he, he gets kick on down to <laughs> one of the European nations and <laughs> get something. Snack. P- Putin can help him out. Yeah, I don't he's think in so. Yeah. Um, it is a bummer that it's a, a one off because like I would love to see the story evolve to where like you have like. Like a uh, like a black market for vampires and like yeah. some guy in like a trench coat is just like you need some O positive like just opens his coat with like baggies of blood like just ready to sell. Well, they they they've got this like kind of one off page where they have the vampire ruling class pays for regular people to come and like you can come and live for free in the vampire nation, but when your number's up, we chase you around at night. Because we want to feel like real vampires. Oh God! And then get yeah. eaten. And then and they get, get eaten. eaten. And they know they're going to get eaten, but they get to live for free without a care in the world until that night. Well, mm, but no. like that's what I'm saying. There's all kinds of this stuff in that book where mm. like it'd be fun to explore. It would be so yeah. fun to have as like a you know 
you gotta wonder who's desperate enough to be like, yeah, I'll take that deal. <laughs> I, I want to uh, live like that. You want to run around the town knowing that you're gonna get killed by a vampire. Yeah, but you don't know when it's gonna happen. Right, and it you could, get to could, live for could, free until that happens. It could be a day. Yeah, you could get a brain hemorrhage tomorrow and keel over dead, Greg. Well, at least I won't <laughs> die with someone's teeth in my neck. Yeah. You get to you get to live for free, baby. You're also, I hate that argument though, because it's just like, oh, you could die tomorrow. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to die tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I will put a hundred dollars down. Last words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next week on First Issue Club. Mom, Greg I'm in more. memoriam. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Sign my. Let's play our favorite Greg hits. <laughs> I'm not gonna die tomorrow. <laughs> All played under like. <laughs> what do you want to say from the beyond? This is your opportunity. <laughs> Please bag and board your comic books. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wiser words could never be spoken. Yeah. So, yeah, that was Blade Vampire Nation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to buy it. You convinced me. Marvel, please, 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 at least do another. I'm going to buy it, too, because it's one fucking book. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, the investment is so low. It's only four ninety nine, And Mark Russell attached to and, it. Like... Yeah, Mark Russell wrote it. Please, God, Marvel, do some more stuff with this because this is and get I your head out of your ass. They they have announced a what is it Bloodline Daughter of Blade yes. series, yeah. but I think she's right now based in New Orleans. I don't. I'm not sure. Cool, but New Orleans. I'm hoping some of that stuff kind of ties into this. Like there there has to be a reason they did this book. I whatever, just well, do more of this. And X Men did a handful of things with uh, vampires for a while, so yeah, some. It's one of those things where something feels like they've been boiling towards something for a while. Wasn't Wolverine a vampire for like a second? And Jubilee. They well, did they Jubilee did. like a few years yeah. ago, but Wolverine, I think this year he Oh he, the was it the well, X Force book that did a whole vampire thing? But like it, it didn't take. Well, Wolver the Wolverine solo book and the X Force book, I think both kind of crossed over into this thing. Mm-hmm. But I uh, he was trapped for a while and his whole thing with like him healing he's like an unlimited blood supply oh and, uh-huh. and i think there might have been some story point about his blood being so like rich with those like with like that healing factor mm. that it was making the vampire nation like stronger or gave them the ability to like go out in the sun a little bit or something I, I, I feel like i remember something about that but in, in any Hell case yeah. it was a fun storyline and i felt like with a handful of the other things going on that we were boiling up to some big vampire event at, at yeah. marvel and it never really happened i would be totally down for a gigantic vampire event vampires versus predator make it happen versus <laughs> alien yeah dude <laughs> i'll write it I know you will. You probably already wrote it. Um, only 400 pages of fan fiction. Uh, the other book I read this week was Murder World Avengers. Um, this is our buddy Jim Zub and Ray Fox. Yeah, They both wrote it together. Jethro Morales did the art. Never seen it before. Looks great. Um, Greg brought up a good point. If, if you didn't realize, this is a series, or I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah. Mike and I were talking about this. This yeah, is... I'm an idiot. Don't fucking give me any credit. <laughs> this is a series of one shots they're doing. Yes. Um, but it's all one story. So Avengers is the first one. I think the second one's gonna be Spider Man. They're doing a Wolverines mm-hmm. issue. I'm sure a couple others probably gonna be five or six, whatever. Um But it, it's kind of what it says on the tin. This is Battle Royale in Marvel. Um Arcade has set up and I guess is still setting up every year, Murder World, 200 people go in, one guy comes out, they get $100 million and a new life at the end, and go, go nuts. He broadcasts it on the dark web. That's the hook of the book. The The uh, titular Avengers that are in there are murder bots, so they're, they're robots attacking normal-ass people. Got it. So there's normies... 200 normies. And so where do the superheroes come in? They're robots. Oh. They, they are Avengers robots. Oh. Yeah. So That's each, clever. So each issue is like a different level of murder world, and it's going to have a different superhero, is my guess. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So Cuz I saw are, that cover I'm like, what the fuck is this thing happening here? It's it's not necessarily like a Hunger Games wherein they're supposed to kill each other. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously people can. Yeah. Hell yeah, purge as, baby. As part of the game of Murder World, but in this scenario, it's more of like a survival of the things that are after you. Yeah. Yeah, it is both. Yeah. It, to to be clear. I'm well, honestly surprised Mojo isn't involved with this as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like broadcast it. Well, Mojo would like he'd get want superheroes. Arcade just wants normies. Yes. You would think Mojo would want superheroes. I mean, it's a, it's an easy broadcast for uh for the Mojo people. Mojo's gotta have superheroes. Yeah. He's real. Otherwise, he made his own. Otherwise, it's That's awful true. content. Yeah. <laughs> this is gar. <laughs> this is like plebeian. This is garbage. Yeah. Um, but it's a super fun first issue. Uh, is there a titual? Normie that we're following through the series, like there, a like a like a Brent or there, a Veronica. There or is, but there is a big twist at the end, and I don't want to ruin it. Oh, are they not a normie? There's a big twist at the okay. end. Okay, <laughs> all right, it's Pizza Rat, folks. <laughs> so <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, so speaking of Pizza Rat, have you seen the variants so, coming out for what? Uh, like FOC in January and February? The 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 Stormbreaker variants are shrunken down superheroes next to like rats or like other ant- like cats and stuff like other animals. Oh, is it is it like the the Ant Man variant they did when the last Ant Man movie came out? Oh, those are funny. Uh, like in kind the, of in, in the, the same realm, center of a big yeah. white Stark cover, it's <laughs> yeah. just like an itty bitty character. But so like that was the funny. the Deadpool variant is him fighting. Pizza Rat. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what's going to happen in January that, like, everyone's been shrunk down well, to... Maybe it is. Quantumania. Quantumania, rat yeah. yeah. Does it, I thought that came out in, like, May or something. February. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I am a fool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's synergy. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're tying it into the movie. Corporate synergy. Gotta love it. Thank you, Disney Plus. All hail. Thanks for listening. As always, we appreciate you being part of the club. If you're looking for more stuff, find us over on the Patreon. Till next time. Bye. First Issue Club is edited and produced by Mike DeStacy and Greg Wittite. Follow us on social media at First Issue Club and check out our Patreon for videos, audio, and more at patreon.com slash first issue club.